Do you want to get as overpowered as humanly possible as quickly as humanly possible in Metaphor Re Fantasio? I know that you do, because that's what I wanted to do, and I've been playing the game for quite a bit of time now, so I can really tell you some great hints and tips about that. It's all down to stats and jobs, and that's what I'm focusing on in today's video, and I do think that that is worth a sub, as I do try my hardest at 100,000 subscribers. With your help, your like, and your sub, I do know that I can get there. So, today I want to talk about what stats are really good, what stats you should kind of, like, avoid, uh, you know, just don't even bother with them because they kind of suck, and what jobs are great jobs to have and how the whole job system works. So let me go ahead and start deep diving into that now. First up, I want to start at the beginning, like right at the beginning of the game, during the demo. The most important question in the entire game is asked to you within about 20-30 uh, minutes or so of starting the game. You might not think that it's all that important, but it is! Whenever you're in the recruitment office with Stahl, you're going to get a five-pronged question, and Whenever I first answered this question, I didn't really think anything of it, and I made the WRONG choice. And whenever I figured it out, I went and I started over to make the right choice. So, let me go ahead and go over this question and talk about what these responses do and why this is so important. Whatever. And your answer is, I'm stronger than I look, which increases your strength by 5 points. All these answers increase one particular stat by 5 points, and strength obviously increases physical damage that you deal to enemies. Then there's I've Got a Sharp Mind, which raises up your magic, which increases the magical damage that you deal. Then there's I Can Take a Lot of Punishment, which increases your endurance or your defensive power. Then there's also I'm Small But I'm Quick, which increases your agility, and agility works a little bit differently. It's the basis for how successful it is that you land a hit, or evade a hit, or escape from battle. And then there's I've Always Been Lucky, which raises your luck, which is your item acquisition rate, and also how often you critical hit. Personally, I would either choose I'm stronger than I look, or I've got a sharp mind. And honestly, if I was really, really, really gonna say, hey, go for this one, it's I've got a sharp mind. And the reason for that is because magic is overpowered in this game. You definitely want a magical caster. And uh, the game doesn't really provide you a magical caster character on like a silver platter. In the beginning, you have to wait quite a bit of time before you get somebody magically inclined. Stahl is strength based, Hulkenberg is more endurance based, and uh, Heisenberg is more agility based. So yeah, you really do need a magical caster so that falls onto the backs of your hero. Now. There is another thing that I do want to talk about, and that is whenever you gain levels. Uh, always, 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 if you chose I Got a Sharp Mind and you got the extra five bonus points in your magic, you want to put every single bonus point that you possibly can into that magical stat. Every single freaking one. Uh, you are going to get two points per level up. One will rotate, so you still will be somewhat well balanced. The other one you can pick and choose as you see fit. I threw it all into magic, and it was fan freaking tastic. The reason why magic is so great is because these enemies, they all have, you know, weaknesses to various elementals, and being able to hit those elementals and then just deal tons of damage while also getting extra turns is just so overpowered. It is so good. Now, I don't think that your hero is going to be, like, completely gimped or anything by not putting stats into any other category. Um, you can get away with never really physically attacking anyway, so there are ways to increase your stats, and one of them is through bathing. It's going to take until you get the Gauntlet Runner and then a little bit after for baths to open up, but whenever they do, you can use the bath to randomly gain some more stats. Um, and then there's also bath salts. Now, using a bath does take up time. It does take up like a nighttime activity on the Gauntlet Runner. But if you use some bath salts, which you can buy in Camaro Village or Anundo Village, then you can increase your stats even more. The bath salts over in Camaro Village will increase your agility by two whenever you take a bath, in addition to whatever the bath raises. And the ones over in Anundo Village will increase your endurance by two in addition to the bath as well. Now, there are some other ways to uh, raise your stats as well, mostly through equipment. There is this armor called the Noble Tuxedo that you can buy in Grand Trad, and it increases all of your stats, every single freaking one, by one, and it has massive, massive defense power as well. There's also some other really nice stuff that you can get, and um, a lot of equipment that you can get 
you can take it to the church and you can purify it and it becomes even better and the stat increases get even better like this divine speed clothes before they were just the speed clothes i purified him at the church and now it has an extra five agility so that's a really nice thing to have um another thing in the equipment that you want to keep track of whenever you're in here is having all of your bases covered having all of your elementals covered as well uh like i said before hitting weaknesses through elements is a huge part of the game so there are igniters that you can get as an accessory and these cast various different spells and hit different elements uh whenever you equip them as an accessory so they're very very nice the pious igniter uh does a multi-target healing the glow igniter deals light elemental damage the blaze igniter does fire elemental damage to all enemies and you can equip this on any character that you like so i like to kind of move them around and have everybody cover all of their bases with the various igniters once I do uh, get them. Another thing that I want to show you over here in the item menu is the heroes line of items. This increases archetype experience by 100 points with incense, 500 points with heroes fruit, and 1000 points by the hero's leaf of light. Say that you've already mastered an archetype, but you still want to keep it equipped like, you know, the mage archetype because it's just so good. Once you, um, basically you won't stop gaining experience for it. You'll still gain experience for it and it will still level up. But instead of actually gaining another level on the mastery, you'll get another hero's leaf of light. So you can use that in order to level up a different archetype. So you could say, hey, I want everybody to be a mage and level up that archetype and then use that experience that you get through the hero's leaf of light to level up some lesser archetypes that you don't like using. There's also incenses that you can gather. Um, a lot of these are like in the little glowy things around the dungeons. A lot of these incenses are the glowy things around the dungeons too. And these will increase some of your stats too. So do not forget to use those. And I would go ahead and complement everybody's strengths by uh, with them. So like the strength incense, I would use on Hulkenberg because she attacks a lot. I would use the speed incense on Hyesme since a lot of his... Um, Thieving abilities has to deal with his agility as well. So yeah, just do it that way. It's really good. Now let's look at the archetype tree over here and let's talk about that and how this all works, how it all kind of levels up. So as you can see, my hero Kupo is a merchant right now and there is another job attached to the merchant tree, but I can't open it up right yet. This will open up once I get Merchant Mastered at level 20, and once I get my uh, bonding level with Brigitta up to level 8. So that will take some time, and there's also another mystery requirement down there for it too. Um, let's see, I've gotten the Seeker Mastered as well, but I can't unlock the next job in the Seeker Tree until I get more up to rank level 3 with his bonding as well. Same thing here with the mage. I have that mastered, but I can't unlock the next uh, tree here unless I get level 3 with Galica. There's another job down here which I think is kind of interesting. Uh, this is the Magic Knight. In order to get the Magic Knight, you need to have mage at level 10 knight at level 20 in order to unlock that one so if you're looking around here um, there is a reason why you should go ahead and master these jobs but another thing that you do want to keep in mind is you want to make sure that each character masters what they are good at so i have kupo my hero he is magically inclined so i'm having him work on seeker and mage um, and I threw him over into Merchant for right now because it does have some pretty neat things going on in here, uh, such as Lucky Fine getting extra items after battles. Some of these passives are pretty good as well, so I figured why not? And there was nothing else for him to really do. I put Stall over here in the hero or in the healer tree. I put him over into Cleric as well, so he has access to some light magic. I also gave him the uh the warrior tree over here as well and hulkenberg i threw her over into knight she's working on magic knight because that is more of a defensive uh orientated class so i wanted to give her that it's also a very good idea to have as many of your characters master mage as possible so whenever you are able to go into skill inheritance you can give them a bunch of different skills a bunch of different elements that they're able to um, 
that they're able to attack with. So that makes your life so much easier if you're able to have multiple different um, elements that they can hit. So you can hit as many weaknesses as humanly possible. That will just really make your life so much better, so much easier, and make you be able to really breeze through these battles. Because once you can find a weakness and you hit that weakness with these magical spells, then you'll just breeze through these battles. So I hope that all this information really did help you. And if it did, please leave me a comment. And I also want to hear from you. What hints and tips do you have for Metaphor? Let's all talk and chat about it in the comments. And as always, have a good day.